So we are going to Philippians chapter 2. Brother Isaac, you are welcome. He has uh, finally come. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So Philippians 2 verse 5. Kaleba uh, Philippians verse I mean, uh, 2 5, yeah. He says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Now he begins to define the mind the mind that was in Christ who being in the form of God thought it not robber to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. He was not a man, but he condescended into the likeness of men. That is humility. He condescended from heaven from the pearly white throne to become a man to test my suffering to go through my temptation to know how to be the right kind of a mediator. Those are Brother Branham's words. And then he says, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Obedient or obedience is a natural element. He became obedient. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him. And given him a name which is above every name. Why? Because he was obedient. God gave his character to him so that he can manifest it. Verse 10 says that the name of Jesus every knee should bow of the things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. May God add blessing the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. I think give me some power here. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to speak on the subject. The word is quickened by humility. The word works by humility. Now, it's only humility that will hand over the character of God to the believer. Because the word has the character of God. And whenever you subject yourself to the word, more and more to the word, you take the very character of the word. So humility is key for God to work in the believer's life. Brother Branham says because the very first step 
kubanga edali e, 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 enerisoka to successful christianity eri obukristayo obuwanguzi and to show that man has received the holy spirit no kulaganti omuntu afuni omoyo omtukuvu is humility weto waze real god given humility obweto waze bwene obuherei bwa katonda Amen. Amen. He says that's one of the things that will reflect out of you. But to show that you've received the Holy Ghost. Sometimes we swell. We feel taller than what we are. We try to alienate ourselves from the real selves. And yet God requires humility of us. Amen. Brother Branham says this words. The very first step to successful Christian. And to show that a man has received the Holy Spirit. Is humility. Amen. Amen. So Isaiah needed to be taken before the throne. Before he could go out into service so that he can learn how important humility is in service before God and God is taking him before the cherubim seraphim Amen. to show how humble they are before God these are men who have never been caught in a situation of sin but they were perfect as perfect can be and yet at the same time they were so humble humility is key to a very I mean successful Christian life in Isaiah chapter 6 there was a king his name was Uziah I mean you, yeah Uziah and this man Uziah here he was so humble but when success came his way he began to inflate himself Amen. Amen. above where God required him to be. Then God had ordained him to be a king but he also wanted to be a priest. Now, Humility is to stay in what God has called you to be. Because the only way you can ever be blessed of God is if you are in your position. Amen. Amen. When Abraham was in his position, he would fight five kings and he slaughter five kings. But Abraham out of his position when he goes beyond the borders of Canaan Amen. you know he would be scared of one king so your victory is your position and the work of God in you, in your position can only be ignited by humility Amen So God takes Isaiah and uh, you know he looks at these seraphim on how they approach God in service because here was a man King Uzziah he was the idol Amen. Amen. He, he was the uh, learning 
idol of Isaiah. Amen. Amen. But he came to a time and he went beyond humility. So it doesn't matter where God has blessed him. I can as well be this also. Well, so he elevated himself. But then the Lord removed him from service by I mean allowing him to be leprosy. Simply because he had gone out of his position. He was failing in the area of humility. And when he failed in the area of humility, Amen. God removed him and it caused desire to see beyond his curtain. Amen. Because you had become a very effective curtain. And the testimony of Isaiah is in Isaiah 6.1. In the year that King Uziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With the two he covered his face And with the two he covered his feet And with the two he did fly And one cried at another And said holy Holy, 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 holy Is the Lord of hosts The whole earth is full of his glory Hallelujah That was this angel standing before him and they knew their holiness was the holiness of the almighty God. So now when they go before his presence they cover their face in reverence and they also covered their feet with humility. Hallelujah. They could not serve God without humility. Humility. Amen. Amen. Are you together with me? They covered the face in reverence Hallelujah. Hallelujah. and they cover their feet in reverence before they fly into service are you together with me how we need to have those six wings the wings of reverence to the God whom we serve amen, amen. To be sincere and honest to him. And also to be humble before his presence. Before we can say, Whom shall we send? When Isaiah fulfilled those three reverence, humility, and then. God, I mean, he was ready Amen. to go into mission work, to be used of God because he had reverence he had humility and God says whom shall we say and then Isaiah says here I am hallelujah because he felt that he had received the quality Amen. Amen. of humility. God requires humility before he goes with you to work. Whatever work you do, Brother James was breaking down the ministry of Christ here last Sunday evening. He talked about apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, governments, deacons, pastors, singers, whatever position you are in, it works by humility. 
Brother Branham, Branham, when he was going to preach the message experiences, a brother stood up to introduce him and he said these words. In the ministry, now we will soon be 34 years. That's the man talking about Brother Branham. Of hundreds and hundreds of preachers of the different faiths and of our faith the Pentecostal faith I have never yet met a man manifesting humility from day to day like Brother Branham manifests. The weight of this the weight is crushing the very life out of him. Amen. Amen. He has a weight. And he says he's crushing his life out of him. He's carrying the weight of humility. Amen. Amen. You don't realize what it means to, to fight the powers of darkness. All the powers of the enemy are turned loose against him. You perhaps only have a small portion against you. Amen. Amen. Remember the reason that Jesus suffered on the cross was not because of his own sin, but because the powers of hell were determined to crush him. So if you have anything special from God, the powers of darkness are going to do the best to crush you. That's what the man was saying of Brother Branham. He says, I've never seen a man who displays the quality of humility like this man does. He says he carries a very big weight that's even crushing his life out of him. But yet, if you've got such a mighty gift, all the powers of the enemy will try their best to come and crush you. So as long as you are humble, are you together with me? That's your protection. God will protect a gift through which he works. Amen. Amen. Because he was through humility. Sometimes we get offended when people say things about us. But how about carrying the weight? And you accept it that they are saying what they say not against you but against the life that's on the side of you. You see, as long as you have Christ the enemy mobilizes all his demons to come and fight you. What are they trying to crush? They try to crush the spirit of God and the position which God has placed you in to kill your spirit. And then they said all kinds of things about Brother Branham. They called him a Ricky and Ricket. I mean, they, I mean, they called him uh, Unland, Unland, right? And then he also says 
you are rickets and ricketers rats and cats and god told him no 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 those are god's people leave them then god told him go yeah he says i can't go to them i've lost the feeling why because the devil was attacking that nature of humility in order to shoot down the gift that's what the devil does you know they will come and boom boom, boom. Then you say, hey, 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 are they joking with me? I'm going, I'm going to shoot back. You lose it. But let this mind be in you. That was in Christ Jesus. The mind that caused him to humble himself and be able to manifest the word. The devil wanted to make him unhappy simply because the devil knew that the word works through him. If the word doesn't work through you, the devil will see no reason why he attacks you. But if he sees that the word works through you, he will come down to shoot at you and lose your humility. They attacked the Lord. He was God in the body of flesh. He had the ability to call down a thousand angels and do anything against God. I mean, uh, Herod. Uh, Herod. Amen. Amen. On pirates. On all those Pharisees. But humility was only to do what God allowed him to do at a certain time. Yes, I was here in 1989. So humility ought to close the entire church for God to work through the church. God had to come in a state of humility in order for him to exercise the spoken word. Amen. Amen. He could not create until he condescended from the state of Elohim, the invisible spirit, to the state of Logos, which was the visible spirit. So the power of God had to be manifested by condescending in humility. He became Logos. In order to express the mind of God and in humility, we are able to receive from humility. Are you together with me? Yes, sir. Because we know that there is a time before time. Yeah, before time. Amen. Amen. You know the scripture says in the beginning God created. How about before the beginning? There must be a God who existed before the beginning because it says in the beginning God created. So the God whom we know that he came down into the body of Jesus is the God that was there before the beginning. And while he was there, there was no light. There was no heaven. There was no earth. Because he created them all. Are you together with me? So he existed before existence. He was an eternal 
spirit. And so now, when he was going to create, he had to come down from that invisible nature that could not be seen by a spirit eye to a nature lower than the highest nature. So he came into what we call spirit image. Why? Because he was going to create man and give him the authority over the earth. But this man here needed to look back. Amen. And see who his father was. So he put on a nature which is the nature of spirit and he says let us make man in our own image. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. So he humbled himself that was humility in order to exercise the word. Are you together with him? And we see him take another step. When he had made man in the nature of flesh, hallelujah, hallelujah. he tried to go to man in holiness that man had seen in the garden of Eden. And what did Adam do? Adam He went hiding. So God says, I'm going to take steps and redeem man, bring him back into my image. He tries another time. He calls the children of Israel out of uh, Egypt into the desert of Sinai. He calls them to gather on that mountain. And he says God is going to speak to them. And when God came down, all of them ran away. He says, I will take a body. And he go to them in the form of a man. That's where Paul says, let this mind be new, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being God, exhibited himself in the nature of man. And when he came into that form, that was humility. And he told the Father, I have manifested thy character. I have manifested thy name. He had to humble himself to manifest the word. Let's go to First Peter chapter 5. You see, the whole church, if God has to work in our church, we must put on the nature of humility. Because that's the only way God can work. You don't come to church simply because you are more educated than me. No, you don't come to church because you got a lot of money. You need to come to church as a son of God. And the only thing that can prove you are a son, Brother Branham says, if humility can work in you. First Peter chapter 5, verse 1. He says, The elders which are among you are exhort. Who am also an elder? He said, Mukade Munamwe. 
and witness of the sufferings of Christ. And also partake of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Is telling the order. That's the pastor. Taking the other side thereof. Not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lacquer, but of a ready mind. Not for filthy lacquer, but of a ready mind. But of a ready mind. Neither as being lords of a God's heritage. So see, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. He's talking to the shepherd. And he's saying, but remember, there is a chief shepherd over you. And now when you know there's a chief shepherd, there is a sense of humility that you need to come under for the chief shepherd to walk through the shepherd. And we learn from David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. David fully understood God. He understood all his attributes. He knew him as Jehovah Jireh the provider. He knew him as God who heals. He knew him as God who protects. He knew him as God who gives joy. So he knew him from all those angles. That is the chief shepherd. And David is saying, as long as I know him, by those attributes, I shall not want. The chief shepherd, when the chief shepherd shall appear, we shall receive the crown of glory. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Amen. Amen. Meaning that submit yourself to the ministry of a pastor, a pastor somebody whom he has to humble himself to. And even the younger need to submit themselves to the ministry God has put among you. So if you mean it works in the church it's unimaginable how much of the glory of God in the signs Mubonero, wonder, miracle, power of transformation that will be unveiled among us. Amen. Amen. He says, likewise, ye young, submit yourselves unto the elder. Ye all of you be subject unto one another. And be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he will exalt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that God 
Can lift you. Can walk through you. Can bless you. Can give you a higher uh, reward. So the chain of humility binds the church together and God begins to walk through it. Because God he had to condescend come into the body of Jesus to manifest redemption. And now that God he says and he gave some Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that it is still the same ministry of Christ. So these ministries here, they humble before God. And God walks through them. And if you humble yourself to the ministry of the elders, then you begin to benefit. From the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit can only work by way of humility. Don't hang in your titles. We are brethren. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm showing you something God is going to do in your life if you catch the principle that God could only work by humility. Even in himself it required him to come from that extreme being and condescend and come into the Logos. And it's there where he manifested the word. Because Logos is the word. When he humbled himself, his mind could then be expressed. Let there be. 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 And Brother Branham says, humility comes to humility. When he's talking about the dove and the lamb, humility comes to humility. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of palsy, grievously tormented. So this centurion is calling him Lord. He's not saying, hey guy. I can't say more. Hey guy, guy, guy. Uh, you know? He won't say that. You know? Like, you know, the white man wants to say, hey guy. Hi. There was a sense of humility that he is attributing to the gift. Lord. And Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion said, Lord, I'm not worth that you should come under my roof. But speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man and an authority. And he he Verse 9. For I am a man and an authority. Mm -mm. Let me humbly use this to illustrate what I mean. Can come? Now, 
Kaiula buti. And you said that I'm arresting you. Kaiula buti. So lo kuida ya kwe dundeza kwa tindi kugema. No, he cannot. That's over. Why? Why? He is no longer under authority. Takali gansi wabu yinza. For him to exercise authority, he had to be under authority. I know Kubagansi Wuinza. But once you are not under authority, you cannot exercise authority. I can stop and got only answer Wuinza to Sobolako Sabuinza. I cannot come and say, I want to arrest you, brother. Sobolako and Toga and Abgama. I don't have the authority. Wuinza and Buzia. The Inspector General of Police the other day was saying, he says if a policeman comes to arrest these days ask him for a card and an arrest warrant to show he's a man under authority and therefore exercising authority I'm coming. That's why I'm emphasizing that. For I am a man under authority. Having soldiers under me. That's why Kaihura today cannot go to the CPS. And he says, You OCDPC, I have transferred you. He's not under authority to exercise authority. I am a man under authority. Because I'm a man under authority. I serve under the Caesar of Rome. Amen. I have soldiers under me. And I said to this man, go. And he go. And to another camp. And he come. And to my servant do this and he does it. When Jesus had it he marveled and said unto them that follow verily verily I say unto you I have not found so great faith no not in Israel Hallelujah Hallelujah the man knew how to release authority. I'm a man and authority. And I say unto you that men shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom, the message believers, may be cast out into the outer darkness. Why? They don't understand the principle. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Yes, Yakov, mommy, go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. The centurion understood the authority of humility because as long as he was under authority he could exercise authority. If he could be funny Singer, and they take him away from under authority, he cannot exercise authority. How many of you want to exercise divine power? Divine authority. We should stand and say, I am a man under authority. The Holy God guides me daily. The word is my pathway. I am a man under authority. And when that humility is realized, then God begins to work. 
God will therefore allow certain things to create character in the life of a believer. Because God ordained that you should dispense authority over the devil and different situations. So God will cultivate the character of humility into you. If you fail on humility, he will allow certain things. I don't know why. But my boss is very rude. God is allowing a pharaoh to create and cultivate the sense of humility. Because we've always remained arrogant. In church, nobody says nothing about it. You are right there around the top. Then God says, okay, I'm going to deal with your character that my word may work through you. And he knows how to do it. He chooses to take it at the place of work. Why? Because you can't do without your job. You cry. Then you learn to say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, boss. Then he smiles. Yes, I am dealing with you. That boy was very stubborn. <laughs> but look at how he is now. I'm just going to show you. John, come here. But I'm one of the managers. He calls me like, yeah, you have to do this and do this and do this. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah, fine. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. He says, you see, I'm dealing with him. <laughs> God will allow certain things. Even in your own house, he will allow your wife to kill in your character so that the word may work through you. And you say, what happened to my wife? Hmm. Ah. And then you start saying, shake your head. I have three children. You cannot go into another marriage. Even then, the word doesn't allow me. I've always told the church that my wife is a special woman. How can I tell the pastor I have problems at home? Then you begin to turn down. Now, sister, exactly what do you really want us to do? And then she says, ABC, you come into line. And the Holy Spirit says, Amen. You understand? God allows the situation to cultivate that humility so that you can use the word as a son of God. Because when the time of redemption came, it was necessary for him to take a body in order for him to become a kinsman. Hallelujah. He had to come. He had to condescend. Let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. He said, okay, for me to exhibit redemptive authority, redemptive power, I have to condescend. He had to become a kinsman with reflections of both God and man. He knew when to use the reflection of God. He knew when to use the reflection of a man. I know you are a very important person at your place of work. But you must be like a God. He knew when to be God. And he knew when to be a man. 
When he was overwhelmed by emotions at the grave of Lazarus, that was a man. But when he says, Lazarus, come forth, that was God. When he was hungry, that was a man. But when he pulled back the life from the fig tree, that was God. That was a man when he slept in the ball. But when he seized the storm, that was God. When he died at the cross, that was a man. But when he gave life back to his own body, that was God. Are you together with me? Yeah. He, he came down. Yeah, he was, he condescended. Yeah, he was, he used the power of the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something about Christ. Here. Both characters lived together. Amen. Amen. The character of God and the character of a man Amen. lived together. Amen. He came and lived next to the human character so that he could redeem us into his character. Amen. So the Messiah was the manifestation of the character of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came a man. Yeah. Yafu komuntu. Amen. Amen. He condescended. Yafunza. That was humility. Before he could use the power of the word. Listen. It's a character. Mbala. Amen. Amen. Brother Branham says in identification message of Phoenix. No other nature could do this. He was the molded perfect character of God. When he was a fallen character that all nature has. All men had a fallen character. Even everything that was in a man fell. Everything has got a dying character. And he had a living character. So he expressed it in Christ. And he paid the price. Amen. Amen. He was God's expressed image. In him was God. God in Christ. Revealing himself to the world. And no love could ever be greater than that love. Such a person would become what he did. In order to redeem what has been lost. God projecting himself. To make a plan of redemption. Redeem this foreign character of our world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Christ came in humility to manifest the character of the invisible God. It was in humility. He came as a man. Then exercised the power of God. That's what God is looking for. In the church. That we again. May become the body of Christ. So that God. Can exercise his power. Through you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all the things by the word of his power. Amen. So he came to reveal the attributes of the invisible God. But he had to humble himself first. In Christ, Christo, Jesus molded, you know, in him was molded the character of God. Muye, 
no mwa umbiwa embala ya katonda as savior ngomlokozi as love ngogonza as healer ngomuonya as king ngakabaka as grace ngaikisa they lived close to him byami nabi ali kumpi na ye yeah you know the people lived close to him abantu bali kumpi na ye but he was the express image aine chali ekifani ekimanisa his humility obweto wazewe manifested the greatness of god gwa manisa obukuru kwa katonda masaya masiya was the manifestation no kwali okumanisa of the character of god okwembala ya katonda are you together with me lwanize so God wants you to ye. become the manifestation of the same character by humility. I'll show you something here. The prophet says, that's the sign of the Messiah. Don't you see? It was the Messiah that was in Moses. It was the Messiah that was in Enoch. It was the Messiah in every age. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. He's Christ all the time. He Christ will reach us. Said I know. We know that when the Messiah comes. To identify Messiah waida. That's what is going to do. He said I am he that speaketh unto you. Ya kubanti zenzu ya yogera nimwe. Upon that she dropped the water pot. Kwecho ya surenso ya mari. Ran into the city. Galimwe yalumba mchibuka. Come see a man. Ya kubanti mwe demono msaada. Who has told me what I done? Anko be ready amira mbe bien kosi. Tini Messiah mwene. And the people of the city. Abantu abechibuka. Without seeing it done. The whole city believed on him. That's why. Right. He, his characteristic of what he was. That was it. His characteristic of what he was. Are you together with him? Yeah. What could they see? The works of God. They were working through him. Amen. Amen. He was God. But for him to release this to man, he had to come in a condescended form. And then he says, let this mind be in you. That was in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, God would like to break your character. Katonda aye yanyenzo kumena amena embala yo before he uses ngaka alikozesa he doesn't use pride takozesa malala he doesn't use knowledge takozesa kutegera he uses constant revelation akozesa kubikulirwa okutawao i've always told you pulido makobi when moses left musa boyaja median Emidian. to go and work in Egypt to redeem the children of Israel he went with one statement take this stick when you throw it it becomes a snake when you take it it becomes a stick go and tell Pharaoh let my people go that was humility to believe God at his word he did not say, I have been the commander of Pharaoh's army before. I was a prince next to the throne. I know the might of that army. If you tell me to go and train the children of Israel into guerrilla warfare, I've got the ability of stealing them out. About 1,000 of them train them and go back. But humility says, Amen. Humility says what? Amen. Humility believes his God and not me. And you know, when Moses went, he was only told one thing, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. That was humility. So he goes to Pharaoh, let my people go. When Pharaoh does this, God tells him, now do this. Now do this. Now do this. Pharaoh does, now do this. After some time, he has written Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, by obedience to God. That is humility. 
Amen. Daily obedience causes the word of God to work through you. And let me say something here. Do you know that God will break you before he can use you? You see men riding horses. They just don't ride horses. They have to break horses. And it's real cowboys. Amen. Who break these horses? They are real cowboys. Amen. Amen. How many of you have read my life story by Brother Branham? Hey, you should. Amen. Amen. One time, you know, he thought he was a cowboy. And he was taught to go and ride one of those horses. When he looked at it, he says, No, I'm no cowboy. I'm no cowboy. Because the horse needed to be broken. It takes a real horseman to ride a wild horse and break it by circumstances by conditions by situations I don't know what you're going through but God is the real cowboy he knows how to break these wild horses until you go praying until you go fasting until you come to church crying God is preparing to ride you to the coming of the Lord hallelujah didn't Jesus say yes, go and release that coat and bring him to me he wanted to ride it yeah, into Jerusalem hallelujah. hallelujah why does he look for that horse it was a broken coat yeah. amen. amen it was a coat whose character has been broken to humility Amen. So the master sat on it and he started going in a prance. Hallelujah. But if it was a wild horse, it would turn his back and then do whatever it is to throw him over. And that's what we've done. We do things to throw the master off of our back. But he needs a ride in your life. Amen. 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 So there is a purpose in whatever God is doing in you. You cry. I don't know. I've done this. It failed. I've done that. It failed. I've done that. It failed. God knows what he's doing. He's breaking a precious horse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that he can ride it to the coming of the Lord. He doesn't want to lose any of you. Moses, when he came out of Midian, the testimony numbers 20, I mean 12, Amen. Amen. and verse 3, he says, now the man Moses was very meek above all men which were upon the face of the earth. God him from being a general. The next to the throne of Pharaoh. And he took him all the way to Midian. And he became a godsman. What's God 
He's trying to create humility so that he can use his vessel. Amen. Amen. Moses was a meek man. And the word of God worked through him. God allowed him to go way back in the beginning. And he says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was seeing the beginning. God would take him in fellowship with him. He was a meek man. He was humble. He had been broken. And God would talk to him. Until he allowed Moses to demonstrate the creation. Because God says, let there be light. But God allowed Moses to create. Let there be flies. Let there be light. Let be light. And and the children of Israel. Let, let there be darkness. In the children of Egypt. Let there be flies. Let, let there be frogs. Let there be what happened? Because God had found a meek man and so the word could work through him. The bodies of flesh will always affect divine character. So it pleases the Father to allow pain in this earthly pregrimage in order to shape divine character. That's the way God works. He looks at you. He looks back at the book. He says it's mine. He's a precious coat. 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 He says, I need to break him. Oh, oh. I have to block his way to the nightclub. I have to block his way to cigars. I have to break his way to this. I have to break his way to bad company. I am going to use him. He is like that manager. Then he says, I have to take my son on the mountain of adoption. He says, look. See what is going to happen. Then he says, you come. Then the man, yes sir. Yes sir. Yes, sir. They are breaking a horse. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes, sir. You come to church. You are right. Brothers, pray for my job. It's a very difficult time. No, it's a good time. <laughs> God is breaking his horse. <laughs> he wants to ride the horse in humility. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 2. He says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. He knows all things. He knows. I did. Even those hard things that you suffer at your place of work. At your place of school. God knows all things. But he allows them. To create a niche of meekness. So that he can be able to ride his horse. And walk through it. I will ride this trail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to what the prophet says. Now the Lord God Almighty says, I know. There he is walking in the midst of his people. There he is the chief shepherd of the flock. But does he hold back the persecution? Does he stem the tribulation? No, he does not. He simply says, I know your tribulation. I am not at all unmindful of your suffering. 
What a stumbling block this is to many people. Like Israel, they wonder if God really loves them. How can God be just and loving if he stands by and watches his people suffer? That's what people ask. What is this man doing to that horse? Can you imagine? Look at what he's doing. But that's the only way he can get a good horse out of it. Amen. 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 He's building character. And character comes with pain in order to produce the very life of Christ. Amen. Amen. You know sometimes when God is building character many people think that God is judging him. God doesn't judge his children. The judgment was met on Calvary. Hallelujah. There is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ. That's what it is. But what God is doing is allowing chastisement in order to produce quality out of you. Amen. Amen. Judgment can bring frustration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But chastisement holds hope for you. Hallelujah. That's just That God is cleaning his vessel. He has taken his port back to the porter's house. To break it and make it a better vessel. There is hope in chastisement. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews 12 there. The great chapter of chastisement. Amen. Do you love him, friends? God wants his word to work through you. But it can only work by way of humility. And how does humility come? God has to break his coat. Through trial. So that the word can work through you. Amen. Amen. So, Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside. Every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the rest that is laid before us. Now, he says we have got a cloud of witnesses. Who are these witnesses? The men of faith of Hebrews 11. Some of them loitered in the wilderness in pain. Some of them were put to death. Some of them were thrown to animals. Much as some of them, all of them, they talk about Moses. All of them, men of faith, they talk about Abraham, they talk about Sarah, they had their hard time before God could work through them. They had to be broken. Every Christian has some struggles in life. But that doesn't mean you are not an elect. Amen. Amen. He only calls for your willingness to lay aside every weight that wraps itself around you. Be willing to be broken. He knows how hard it is to untangle yourself from certain weaknesses and failures. But the 
only divine intervention God must break the horse before he can work with it let's go to verse 4 you love him this afternoon you have not yet resisted blood you have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin for you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as unto children my son despise not thou the chastening of the Lord nor faint when thou art rebuked for whom the Lord loves he chasteneth and he scourges every son whom he receives. He breaks every son. Chastisement is only to sons whom God receives into the kingdom. Hallelujah. They are the only ones who are the blessing of chastisement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The rest of them can do what they want and they can be blessed. But for you, you are different. You are a son. You are chastised. You are broken. Brought to humility that God can work through you. I was telling you the other day we are in this world but not of this world. The people of the world can even prosper without giving tithes and offerings but not you. The principles that govern you are principles of another kingdom which is not here where you live in the body. So if you have to excel then divine principles must work in you that your blessings may not come out of the world but they must come from another kingdom the kingdom of God. Chastisement. The word chastisement means the word training and education of children aimed at cultivating the mind and imparting morals. It also works by correcting mistakes and curbing passions chastisement also works as instruction which aims at increasing virtue are you together with me so sons of God are built in such a way that they endure chastisement and the word to endure has an underlying meaning of pain and patience it means to bear bravely and yet calmly why God is breaking the horse. God is breaking the character that he's going to use. Forty years in the wilderness of Midian. Then he steps back. Yes, and he comes back. Bang. Then he works again. He comes here. He says, ha, Kakali. here. And then he says, I wonder. You'll wonder until he rides you to the coming of the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. Verse 7 there. If you and you are chastening, 
God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if he be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. Therefore, we must rejoice in our chastisement because it's profitable. Verse 9 says, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and have and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? When your father chastised you, you did not desert the family, did you? Because it was done for a good purpose. Verse 10. For they verily for a few days just and us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. But grievous nevertheless afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Chastisement is for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness and yield peaceable fruits of righteousness. Judgment is a rejection and is not profitable. God can never subject an elect to judgment. Not even in this world and even the one to come. But we must learn how to endure chastisement. It creates humility. If we build the nature of humility, the word of God will work through us. Is that amen? The word of God will work that's the way God works he could never create until he had condescended to express humility. He creates man. Man falls in the nature of sin. He says for me to express redemption I must go lower and he came into the body of flesh and then he started to have the mind to heal, to deliver, to save and then he says now I have to go lower into the body of believers. And he says, I've committed unto you the ministry of reconciliation. And he wants to work through you. And he says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Once you catch the humility of God working through humility, finished. You are a tool that God is going to use for the benefit of his kingdom. Don't cry about your trials. They are beneficial. God is breaking his horse to create the character that he uses. I am a man and authority. Isn't that wonderful? A church and the authority. An individual and the authority. And then God will work through it. He says, I never seen such a faith. Faith is just to know the principles. How God works. He says, I've never seen such a faith. This guy, he has subjected himself under humility to exercise authority. He is now humble under me. And he's saying, Lord, you are so great that you don't even need to go into 
my house. I know that you are under authority. You do nothing unless you see your father do. You don't just speak the word because you are under authority and my servant. Hallelujah! And my servant. How we need to get down under humility and see how God is going to use us. God bless you. Amen. Do you love him? Amen. Amen. Humility is what God uses. He doesn't use arrogant spirits. When the devil says, I will arise, I will be like the most high. He says you're useless. Get out of my ranks. Throw him out. But when the son came here, he humbled himself and God used him. Gave him a name above all names. That at the name of Jesus, the name of expression of humility, every name shall bow. God bless you. Brother Moses. Do you love him? We have a tremendous God. He never frustrates you. Even in your trials, he's using them to express his greatness through your life. God bless you.